Like the legend of the phoenix Ends where beginnings What's up, everybody? Dread Pack at it again with another video on Ready or Not. Today, we're going to be talking about an update that just released the other day. And yes, this is an actual playable update. Granted, it's not a PvE update, but it was actually quite fun. They released a newsletter, so I'm going to be talking about that and also interweave my thoughts in between, showing off as much as I can. So let's get into it. It starts out with saying, The latest update to the Ready or Not Alpha is not live on Steam. This update brings a vast amount of changes and additions, including an entirely new map named Shoot House, which I just dropped a uh, gameplay video on if you want to go check it out it's in the eye icon at the top right of the screen it's actually a pretty nice map gotta say a complete overhaul for the training map night variants for both levels along with improvements to nvgs and flashlights a reworked door system a revamped item selection ui and many many more new features and improvements to the game yeah we're definitely going to be looking at a lot of this stuff here talking more about it so let's continue on here they talk about the new level shoot house we are finally bringing our brand new level shoot house to the alpha while simultaneously reintroducing doors back into the ready not gameplay uh reintroducing i don't remember a time when it was actually a thing maybe they're talking about internally i don't know but anyways we believe this will add an entirely new dimension to the dynamic and pace of every match creating new opportunities to use currently untouched equipment choices such as the breaching shotgun and breaching charge well that's the one thing that i forgot to do is use the breaching shotgun i need to do that the door wedge and the mirror gun opening up a lot of new possibilities for the player experience it will also incentivize teamwork and tactical play even even further, allowing the player to combine their efforts and cooperate to achieve objectives more than even before. This will make a big difference when it comes to deciding how to play the game, and we are very excited to listen to the community's feedback once they get to experience it firsthand, which I did the other day. And I will say that adding doors to Ready or Not has made this game a lot better. And I actually said this in the past, I'm just like, that's the one thing that I felt the multiplayer was missing, you know, doors, because it really stops the player from just running around like a maniac, and it actually puts a level of thought into it like do i want to open the door slowly do i want to kick it open do i want to blow it open but if i blow it open then i won't be able to close it behind me and you know set up like a little bit of an ambush there so yeah it definitely does add a new level of gameplay to what's already here and it also uses a bunch of freaking equipment that was not used previously i used the c2 a lot but i completely forgot about the breaching shotgun i think i used the door wedge like once and it actually kept people out until i decided to blow it open or actually go down and try to unwedge it which you can unwedge it from the other side of the door the mirror gun isn't too useful because you know the gameplay is a little too fast to really do that but there is multiple chances for you to actually do that so you can actually use the optiwan to look underneath the door and there's also like little holes on the side of the walls that you can actually use to look to the other side of the wall with the optiwan so yeah i quite like the additions a lot as you couldn't tell from my enthusiasm and yeah shoot house is actually a pretty good looking map it's pretty gorgeous i would say it's kind of like a medium-sized map if you compare it to the previous one that we used to play on a lot it's definitely smaller than that and more compact and for a close quarters game it's actually pretty good i think the one thing that's really underutilized though is the basement area i don't think too many people went down there or even noticed that there was a basement area and that's pretty much all i got to say about that i quite liked everything so far so let's push on to the next thing here and this one they talk about introducing night variants on top of the new shoot house level we are also bringing in a completely overhauled version of the training and a night variant for both of the maps before i push on i kind of want to talk about this i think this is like the third or fourth iteration to this map and has actually been significantly reduced like the spawn areas are basically non-existent like you don't spawn in that big uh canal area because it's been blocked off or those busted up ruins for the bad guys it seems like they added like more hills on one side of the map and more structures on the other and they also took out the underground you're no longer able to go underneath the map so they really cut down on the size of it quite a bit they even took out the catwalks that were on the sides so the only way that you can really get in is through the bottom floor you can't go in through the stairs that used to be on the left and right but what they did add to it is a bunch of like doors that you have to open now to get to the top and also a bunch of little hallways and corridors like they really made the building a lot more close quarters than how it used to be which was more open so is it an improvement i mean um i think i liked it more than i actually liked the previous one but then again i really hated that previous one because there hasn't been an update in freaking forever so i guess it's nice to see a new coat of paint but i don't know what do you guys think about that new map let me know down below to welcome these we have also made significant improvements to the functionality and visuals 
of both the MVGs and the flashlight weapon attachment. In line with our mission to ensure every item in the game serves a purpose, players will find that the usage of either the flashlight or the MVGs is paramount in night gameplay. This is an entirely new frontier within the Ready or Not experience, and we are excited to hear your feedback. You know, I I actually use the MVGs more than I actually use the flashlight, but I imagine if you tried to use the flashlight against people who have MVGs on, it's probably not going to be good for them. But yeah, it shows off a GIF here. We've already seen this GIF in the past before, but uh, let's read what it says underneath. Flashlights and MVGs will play a very important role in night gameplay. Environments are very dark, requiring players to make use of items that aid and enhance their visual and awareness. So here's what they talk about the reworked door system. Besides bringing doors back into the game, when the hell were they in the game before? They keep saying that as if I know. I mean, I've been covering this game for a while, but I really don't remember doors being in the game. Like, I, I used to complain that there wasn't doors. Like, that's the one thing that they're missing. I really don't remember doors being in the multiplayer. But anyways, we are also introducing a reworked door system that will change the way players interact with the doors in game. Now, players can walk up to the door and hold F to interact with it. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that because initially, uh, well, I don't know if this breaks NDA, but fuck it. Doors are in the PVE, but they're handled differently than what's actually here because basically what you're supposed to do is hold Alt and then use the mouse wheel to scroll forward and backward to, you know, to manipulate the door. And now they changed it to just holding F to interact with it. The door opening or closing for as long as F is pressed. If you press F, it'll open slightly, but if you hold F, it'll open all the way until you let go of it. I think that it's definitely a faster system than just Alt and then moving the mouse, but I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on it, but it's not, you know, a deal breaker for me. Enabling the player to either enter the room or use the door as tactical cover while they maneuver through the doorway, players can also press B to forcefully open or close the door or double tap B to kick the door open. There is a GIF here of it showing off the uh, door system. And, uh, yeah, the description reads, players are now able to incrementally open and close doors by just holding and releasing F instead of scrolling with the middle mouse button. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's easier because you would have to hold two different buttons. So I think I'm okay with that little change. But moving on to the next thing here, we've got the new item selection UI. We have also redesigned a portion of the interface of the game for better accessibility to the player equipment. As we continue to aim for a minimalistic, immersive, and functional design, all the relevant weapons and tactical items the player has equipped can now be displayed as a part of the HUD down at the bottom of the screen. This enables the player to quickly switch to whichever item they need with a single glance, instead of having to go through the gear wheel or memorize the keys. Ultimately, this will allow for better ease of use for the keyboard and mouse users. So this feature really reminded me of um, Zero Hour, actually, because Zero Hour actually has like the buttons on the screen of what, you know, items that you actually have. I wonder if they took that idea from them. I think I actually quite like this more than the item wheel because, you know, it's simpler. It takes out that extra step of you having to, you know, pull it up because it's on the screen. I think my only issue now with it is just making it a little bit smaller because I feel like it kind of covers up the screen just a tad too much. But aside from that, I actually quite like it. To pull up other stuff, you just click a button and, you know, you have it in your inventory now. Hold the button, I'm assuming, and click upwards with the mouse and you can choose something that's above it, I think. The description reads, with this new piece of UI, the player will be able to get an immediate look at their equipment and the corresponding key bind they need to press it, allowing for a more fluid and reactful gameplay. Yeah, definitely think that this is way better than the wheel because it just takes out a bunch of extra steps like, oh, I have to hold three to, uh, you know, pull up the wheel and then, you know, use my mouse to like look around to the thing that I need. But now I could just press that. And if I need to like switch it to something else, then I could just, you know, do it in the menu screen. So simple. Great for people who are playing in the multiplayer. Other changes and improvements. They have a very long list of new things here. So I guess I'll read it all. Screw it. The first one says, we have entirely rebuilt the game's item system. While this is more of a background change, it will be important for changes we are looking to do in the future. The next one says, the reporting system from single player and co-op has now been added to the PvP. I think I actually saw that because when we arrested them, it actually gave us the option to, you know, click on them. And it basically showed me who arrested this guy. What player on my team arrested that guy? So that's an interesting mechanic, I guess, just to like show off or something. But anyways, new animated loading screens have been added along with useful gameplay tips for new or not so new players. Up next, a new lobby area and new end game screen have been added as well. Yes, I actually quite like the way that this looks compared to the previous one. But then again, I've been looking at the previous one for freaking ever. So it's just nice to see something new. Moving on. Flashlights will now blind players within a certain distance unless goggles or glasses are equipped. Oh, now we actually have a purpose for those freaking things. Okay. All actions now produce a noise that can be heard by other players. Choose your actions carefully if you want to be stealthy. I think my biggest issue with this so far is just how 
whole. I can never tell if it's either upstairs or downstairs. Like, I hear a noise and it's in a certain direction, so I'm assuming it's either on top of me or down below, you know? But anyways, players can now change their loadouts for 30 seconds after spawning and before they fire their first shot. Okay, cool. All weapons have received an animation pass and now have proper bobbing animations. Really? Huh. This will make it harder to engage targets while on the move. I really hate the running animation for the suspects. I, I kind of hope they get rid of that because I don't like it when they run and they have like a gun in one hand and then he has to like put his gun back down for me to like aim and it's just uh you're not but anyways a new reverb system has been added which should be another step forward towards improving the quality of the sound experience for the player yeah so far the sounds have been on point it's just you know above and down below is kind of an issue for me at least but anyways new shell casing sound effects have also been introduced shells will now bounce and create accurate sounds based on the surface they collide with cool new impact decals for multiple surfaces have now been added including rubber glass tile and tree wood new impact decals for bullet and melee damage have also been added to first person and third person models nice i actually did notice that they did add that in it's nice to actually see where bullets are getting shot but anyways multiple issues related to the first person and third person player animation have been fixed we have also revamped the number of first person weapon animations and added a plethora of new ones for many player actions nice multiple ui related issues have been fixed um i did have one issue the game kind of just threw me out of the uh menu screen but the menu screen was still kind of like on my screen i wasn't able to like move my guy around i had to like close out of it somehow it was really odd hope they fixed that if i remember to add that into the video i'll try to add that in we reduced the fov change when sprinting i didn't even realize that it changed interesting an issue causing full screen mode not applying correctly has been fixed okay cool and the last one further optimization work has been made the performance should prove to be far smoother for the player oh yeah definitely uh when you're playing on a dedicated server it feels much nicer but if you're playing on a hosted server for me at least felt very stuttery and kind of laggy but that's interesting how that works but uh, yeah so that was everything with that i just wanted to talk a little more about the gameplay itself it has definitely improved it feels a lot better than the previous update but obviously with every update there's always a bunch of bugs that come in like again this update screwed up my controls like i'm no longer able to lean left to right i have to go in and try to reset them again but luckily this time around they actually added in a reset keys button which thank goodness but then again it's very finicky like ever since easy street left the team the ui has really just like faltered because like i press the reset key and it sometimes does something and it sometimes doesn't i really liked how you could actually turn your gun sideways but i think the biggest issue with it is that it's attached to the slowing down mechanic so anytime that i tried to move my gun backwards it would basically slow down my character to a crawl so i hope that they kind of switch it to something else to be honest one of the newest additions to the game was the g36c it's not necessarily a new weapon but uh they made a different iteration of it thought that it was an okay weapon but it looked really weird without the top grip but it still doesn't beat my scar the scar's meta for me one thing that i noticed about the grenades is that they have some sort of like trail and it kind of reminded me of halo i don't mind that that's here just thought i'd mention that it's an interesting choice so it seems like the keybind actually did fix some of the controls that i had but it still didn't fix my reloading issue where i just only keep on fast reloading so i kind of hope that they fix that at some point but uh yeah so yeah i quite like this update but again this is not a pve update it's a pvp update and a lot of the people that are here are not for the pvp the majority of them are for pve so i think that it's a good update in general but i'm not entirely sure if it's the one that we wanted but i definitely do like the new movement it feels much nicer than it did before so yeah i think that's where i'm gonna end it for someone that enjoys the fact that i cover games like ready or not then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month that's all i really need if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel who knows and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye